Hi, welcome to Centerville Reports today. I'm Maureen Russell Hodson. It's fall, which is the perfect time to plant trees, but do you know where to plant your tree? That gets very confusing because of power lines and roots and all kinds of things. So here to tell us more about a great program that they're offering from DPNL is Holly Wiggins. And also we have our expert on trees, Colin Fannin, who is with Siebenthaler. And you're actually at the Beaver Creek store, Correct. but we have a Stephen Thalers right here in Centerville mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And DPNL has really started this program, Holly, Right Tree, Right Place. Tell us what that's about. It's, it's about bringing attention to the fact that there are overhead lines and other electric equipment when you plant um, trees or other vegetation and just making people aware that um, we really want you to think about where the power lines are and how tall your tree is going to get. And please, if you're going to plant near a power line, make it a tree that's going to grow under the 30 foot height so that we don't have to come through sometime later and cut the branches out of those lines. It's a safety issue for the people working on those. It's a safety issue when there's a storm and it causes a power outage. Uh, you know, there are people who are relying on oxygen and need you know, can't afford to have that power go out. So we don't, we don't uh, enjoy cutting the trees, but yeah. it's, it's something it's a, it's we have to do. It's a necessity. And I think sometimes when you're looking at what you want to plant, you don't think in terms of long term. You're thinking, this is going to look really great exactly. in this little spot, plant it next to these trees, which is where the experts come in, right, correct, Colin? Correct. One of the things that we always like to tell people is that you're going to have the tree for a very, very long period of time. And so why not do the research on it, much like you would never purchase a car just on a whim. You're going to have the car for a long time, so you need to look at it as a long-term sort of investment or project and really do your research before you plan. And so some of the things Holly was saying, you need to know how tall it will eventually Correct. grow. Mm -hmm. What are some other things that you should be looking at? Uh, you should also be looking at, you know, the actual site itself, how much sunlight you're getting, how much water you're getting, your soil conditions. There's a lot to kind of look into, um, which can be a daunting task. So a lot of times it's always really nice to just kind of come in, talk to somebody. Uh, we always tell people to be a little nervous about the internet because there's a lot of information from places that aren't local. So you don't get the right information based right. on Right, just even soil. Exactly. So just always, you know, make sure you're doing your research, double check your heights, your wits, uh, sturdiness, whether you've got, you know, a windy area, a dry area, a sunny area, a shady area. There's a lot that goes into the decision. So you should really take your time to make the correct purchase so that you don't lose the tree or have to have the tree top later. Um, right, so that's, that's the good stuff about the growth part. And then once it's growing, you really have to think about power lines and right. other things that could be related to some type of outage or Correct. or some kind of dangerous situation. There are situation. people with electric boxes in their yard and if we have to come in and work on that, if you've completely covered that uh, box with, with bushes, you know, we're going to have to pull them back, cut them back, step on them to get to that electric box. So just think about making sure there's access there and that there, the trees aren't up in the lines because we, we don't go out hoping to top a tree or make a V cut in it or an L yeah, cut in it. It's not the goal, right? <laughs> right, it's not the goal. We, we uh, trim tr trees year round. We trim 2,200 miles of line every year. And, wow, um, that is it, incredible. It's, it's an incredible task. and and we've got arborists working for us, so it's, it's something we think about when we're out there. And if you're looking for a tree, now might be a good time to plant a cherry tree because DPNL right. is involved with the a thousand cherry tree project, correct, correct. Right? We got involved with Operation A Thousand Cherry Trees and um, partnered with them to, to help promote them and their efforts in getting a thousand cherry trees planted here as an effort um, to thank Americans for their response to, to, to excuse me, the 2011 tsunami and right. earthquake that happened. And so you can go online. Uh, we've got an application online and get uh, a tree. What we're hoping for is subdivisions, neighborhood associations, historic neighborhoods, blocks of, of neighbors to get together and say, okay, I'm going to fill this application out. There's 15, there's 20 of us that all want a tree. If it's a subdivision, you could request a tree for your entryway, uh, your your um, common grounds. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, we're hoping to put these trees out there in larger groups so that when it comes next spring or every spring thereafter, these trees are blooming and they, they're striking. You notice them and they're just another way to beautify uh, the region. So those applications, uh, as I said, the neighbor, the um, nurseries have these applications at the desk, Siebenthaler, North Dayton, okay. uh, Stock Sleggers, um, Knollwood, or you can go online to dpandl 
dot com slash right tree and you fill out an application need to be in by this friday october twenty third we'll be drawing for those trees and it's uh, one per neighborhood or one per neighbor uh, each fr uh, put in the front yard or your side yard your uh, public facing yard um, small business associations can do that you know you've got strips of businesses going in and out of uh, your communities they can all get one put into their the front lawns of those businesses and just make it a beautiful way to enter into a city. So you complete the application either online or from a, one of the nurseries, local nurseries have right. them, and then you're actually doing a drawing Correct. for, and how many trees are you giving away? A hundred cherry trees. Okay. So depending on how many are in these groups, um, that will be how many, you know, whether it's five neighborhoods or two neighborhoods or 20 neighborhoods, it'll all depend on how many trees they've requested. And if we don't give them all away in groups, there'll, there'll be a couple individuals it get some trees as well and cherry trees nice tree to have planted right very nice tree it's hard to, <laughs> to argue with the spring color that you get off of them um, they're just gorgeous that it's something everybody would want to look at you can fill it out and if you don't decide you want to do it by yourself you make your neighbors jealous and then <laughs> they can or get, get over and too. buy one if you don't win <laughs> exactly. one right because they are so pretty exactly Okay, um, and again, the good place to go for information, really on everything we're talking about, is your website. Correct. And Correct. even though you know it as DPNL, you want to make sure you spell out the word and. Yeah, A N D. Um, don't do the ampersand. Correct. D P A N D L is Correct. a good place to go. Well, let's talk too about your community grants because um, a lot of programs going on with DPNL. Yeah, yeah. We we decided to kind of make three efforts this fall to bring attention to Right Tree, Right Place. One was for the community for these neighborhood grants. One was for the communities themselves. So we're, we're asking those communities that are um, Tree City USA communities as designated by the Arbor Day Foundation. And Which the city got, of Centerville is Yes, one. they are. <laughs> they are and several cities in yeah. our, our territory are. And we're telling them that we have two $50,000 grants, up to $50,000 available, that they can beautify a park or a business district, their downtown area by uh, planting trees and, and just beautifying that area. So uh, of the 50, 40% of that needs to be used for planting utility friendly trees or other vegetation. And the rest can be for hardscapes, can be for paths, walk paths, bike paths. Um, there are several cities that put art in their um, parks. Right. Any of those sorts of things. It, it could be you know the large pots and plants that you put along your business districts. Anything to... Um, bring a facelift to those areas and, and make it a community space. Wow, and really enhance not only the, if it's outside, but the motorist experience, the walkers experience, and really all the citizens would really correct, enjoy that. Correct, correct. So it's a benefit to everybody who lives in that community, everybody who goes through that community and visits it. And again, that is online as well, the application? Online. So those those communities can contact us, but most of them know where those okay. grants are. So there's a grant page um, that they fill out our regular grant and just designate on the description that it's for the right tree, right place, and um, that they're an environmental grant that we're looking at and they can try to to get one of those those application that application deadline is January 31st of next year and we'll be selecting those grants by Arbor Day okay so you really need to get on that if you're yes, interested yes. in that it gives them some time to plan and and let's talk about too just some other things when we, when we talk about trees and power outages and, and DPNL is really really involved in a lot of things that you, you may not think about other than outage but your website really gives a lot of good good tips when when perhaps uh, there is an outage, what to do, or safety tips. And I wanted to review some of those because I think sometimes we, we kind of forget about um, you know, where to call or what to do. A lot of times we think, which maybe is a good thing for DP now, oh, my neighbor's gonna call or something. But now that everybody has cell phones, you must be inundated when a neighborhood's out. It's sometimes we are, and that's good. <laughs> and that's and, okay, and, right? And that's another reminder. If you've gotten rid of your landline, we probably don't have a phone number for you. So make sure when you do call, you, you make sure that we can get uh, your number or you leave it with us so that we can update your customer records and we can get back with you. And a lot of times we will, when we have a large outage, we'll do some callbacks just to make sure that you've, you've gotten your power on, that there isn't something else that tripped, that there aren't two faults uh, in an area. So uh, it's important for people to call and make sure that we know how large of an area an outage might be because that helps us determine uh, where the outage is and what caused it. 
And you often, if there's a big storm, will bring people in from other areas as well, right? Yes, and, and we send uh, our, our guys out to, to help with other storms. That's mutual aid between the utilities, and it just helps us all work faster and safer. And sometimes it just takes time. It does. Sometimes I mean, it, just, it takes time. We just have time. to be patient. And, and when you think people aren't working, they might be stopping for a minute to take a coffee break, or they've worked long enough, they, we may have to switch crews. So it's, it's not because they're sitting around right. hoping that it, it fixes itself. It, and sometimes you have to wait on equipment to come in. So there's all kinds of things going on. It's a complicated business when a big storm hits. So we ask you to be patient if that yes. does happen, because yes, do. DPNL is on it. It's going to get repaired. It just may take a little bit longer for one side of the street even right. than another and, as and well. And be, be careful when the power does go out. Make sure you've shut everything down. You don't walk out of the house with a oven on or a curling iron plugged in and on. Be safe and make sure that nothing happens when that power does come up. That's, that's a good tip because that mm -hmm. does happen a lot. Um, let's talk too about if you're going to dig a fence post or put something in your yard. You want to call. Oops. If, yes. Mm -hmm. And she's not saying oops as in oops, like a mistake, but oops That's as in... That's the easiest your, way to, right. to call. Get your yard marked for yeah. all your utilities. Um, cause That's 811 you yes. want to call, right? You, yep. You, you want to make sure that uh, you're not going to bust a line. Exactly. And even if you've got Siebenthaler coming in and putting that tree in, they don't want to dig unless you've marked your yard. Right. So right. you make sure that someone's yard is marked, or do you? Yes, we we would. It's one of the services we provide when we do landscaping or planning or anything. Is that we'll kind of double check that stuff because uh, not only the safety aspect of hitting electrical or a gas line, but right. it's also a huge inconvenience. Even if we take out a cable line, um, you know, we don't want to leave parents or kids at home without you know something to do, and it's it's not something that always gets fixed quite easily on emergencies. That's not really a huge. Uh, it's not like there's a big storm Priority. that's coming yeah. and there's an enormous neighborhood that's out of power. If it just happens to be one little thing, then it, you may not get the service right away. So um, it's called before you dig exactly. and it's 811. Correct. Correct. And then as um, those of us who are going to try to plant this fall, because you say it is the best time to plant, Correct. right? W mm -hmm. What is it about fall that makes it a good time? To it's plant? all about root growth. So okay. the nice thing about getting trees in in the fall is that you start to get some of those feeder roots out there and help to get the tree a little bit more established by the time you get back into the hot part of the summer. If you were to plant in May, you've got about three months before you get into your late July, early August when it gets very, very hot. If you do it now, you just have more time um, and it allows for that root growth to kind of take place so that it's not quite as uh, reliant on you to get out there and actually do the watering, even though if this isn't me saying don't water your trees. Uh, <laughs> if you plant in the fall, you still have to do yeah. you know some, but it's just, a better time overall because you're giving the tree more time to get itself established. And so the tree will be able to weather the winter. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it'll be fine. It's uh, you know no different than if you were to plant it in the spring in terms of the winter. Um, it's going to happen if you get it from a nursery like us. We're local in Beaver Creek, so the winter that you're putting it in, whether you know you plant it right now in the fall or whenever, is the same winter it's been going through sitting on our nursery. Mm -hmm. This is why you need to talk to an expert. You exactly. just can't kind of figure mm -hmm. it out on your own. It's good to talk to people who know how to plant things and can really give you the right advice right. on what you need right. to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, we want to review with you DPNL is offering these programs, Right Tree, Right Place, it's all right called. Right Tree, Right Place. And that's a really good place that you want to go on their website. Yeah, you can go ahead and show that. Yeah, the brochures are available at local nurseries. And um, if you see one of these signs out, we gave uh, 150 trees away this mm -hmm. weekend. Uh, both Siebenthaler locations gave them away. Uh, we'll be having these signs out, so you'll be able to tell who won the cherry trees. So as okay. they're getting planted, and Siebenthaler is the lead planter on those, um, you'll see them out. Get one of these brochures. Look online at dpandl.com slash right tree. It'll give you a couple suggestions for types of trees. Your nursery experts can give you a whole another list of trees that are good, small mm -hmm. trees that are mm -hmm. safe under the lines. And um, just pay attention to what's going yeah, on. Yeah, you really want to be mindful before. Correct. Right. You, might love, you might love a tree or some other kind of vegetation, but if it's not going to work in that place, right. don't put it. Right. Don't put it there. Colin exactly. will help you find another place to put it, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He'll, exactly. come, he'll come to your house mm -hmm. and walk over and he'll yeah. find out a good mm -hmm. place to put it. Correct. Well, thank you very much for the information. It's a great uh, slogan, right tree, right place. For more information, you can call the city of Centerville, 433-7151, or visit our website, which is centervilleohio.gov. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.